Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if it's possible to actually detect radon in the air just using a Geiger counter. And I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. So you may have heard of radon before. Radon is a gas that you might have had measured in your home before and you might have heard a lot about but not quite sure what it is or what it does. So radon is actually the second leading cause of lung cancer besides smoking. Smoking is the main cause, after that it's radon. So we should worry about whether radon is in our house. But unfortunately, it's not required actually to have your house tested for radon. Now radon is a naturally occurring radioactive noble gas. But where does it come from? It actually comes from the ground. So in the soil, there's tiny amounts of uranium. And when the uranium breaks down, one of its daughter products is radon. Now radon, because it's a noble gas, it basically just diffuses up through the ground and it doesn't react with anything. And so if you're in a part of the ground that has more amounts of uranium in it, that radon gas can diffuse up through the ground and it can accumulate in your house. And so you can end up having a lot of radon gas in there. So you can expose yourself to a lot of radiation. So when radon decays, it can either emit an alpha particle or it can emit a beta particle, which is an electron and a gamma ray. So basically it can emit all three types of radiation. Now what's hard about detecting radon with a Geiger counter is because there's already background radiation wherever you are. So if you turn on your Geiger counter, it's just gonna start clicking. You'll hear random clicks but it's not going to be able to detect radon specifically. It's detecting all sorts of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. But the problem with radon is you breathe it inside of you. And once it's inside of you, those alpha and beta and gamma particles can actually cause the lung cancer. Now when radon decays, it emits this radiation, but it also breaks down into these smaller daughter products, mainly thallium and polonium. Now what's cool about this is this thallium and polonium is usually electrically charged. So it will stick to the dust in your house. So basically if you can just collect the dust in your house and hold it next to a particle counter, a Geiger counter, you should be able to detect the radiation coming from the radioactive thallium and polonium. So one qualitative way to find out if there's radon in your house is just to collect a bunch of dust and hold it next to a Geiger counter and see how crazy your Geiger counter goes. So let's try it in my house and see how much radioactive dust I have in my house. Okay, so I'm just gonna collect the dust in my house. I have just um, a tissue filter over the end of my vacuum here. I'm gonna turn it on and collect dust for 15 minutes. Okay, here's the normal radiation in the room around 0.1 microsieverts per hour. Now let's see what happens when I bring it towards the dust. So the green light and the click is every time it's catching a gamma ray. Look how it's already increased. Whoa. Uh-oh. Whoa. 1.1 microsieverts per hour. Looks like it's staying around one. One microsievert per hour just by collecting dust in my house. So that's crazy, just in my house here, I was able to get to a pretty high level. It wasn't very high, but it got to a warning level alerting me that the radiation is pretty high in the room. But you can see that uh, the daughter product broke down really quickly, so I probably don't have a lot of radon in my room. Half-life of these daughter products of radon are actually on the order of minutes. And so that means that um, they're gonna start breaking down on their own, so you need fresh dust to do this. Now we've had our house tested, and it is in the safe level for radon, but what would it look like if you had a lot of radon in your house? So I have a friend who, he has a well that's near a lot of radon, and it's known that there's radon gas dissolved in some of the water. So he decided to do the same method and collect some of the air around the water and see how crazy it goes when he holds the Geiger counter near it. Uh, uh, I'm currently in my 
uh, grandfather's house, this countryside village house, and he uses the, the water from the well, uh, he, uh, he uses the pump to, to get it in, into the house. And I want to check uh, how much uh, redden inside that water because it goes from from deep deep from the from the from the ground. So now our construction is, is ready, uh, and we can go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. It's been fifteen minutes since we left uh, vacuum cleaner. Okay, we'll check results now. As we can see, the water is dangerous. So right now, now I'm going to test, do the test. So you can see how much higher his counts were in the dust of his house than I had here. He even proved that it was the daughter products of radon by doing spectroscopy on it and found that it was actually the daughter products. So you can actually test for radon in your house just using a Geiger counter, but it's more qualitative than quantitative. You can't really know how much of it you have. You can see that he had a lot and I had a little, but there's no real good number to tell you what's safe and what's not. So you can and probably should get your radon tested in your house professionally where they specifically test for radon. But this is a good ballpark check to see where you are in that range. How dangerous is your house? Is there radon gas in there? Is the dust in your house actually radioactive? It's cool that you can check it with just a simple Geiger counter. And I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. What I love about Audible is how it's an app, so that means that it's just on your phone wherever you go. So basically, you just have these audiobooks that follow you wherever you go. So whenever you get a free moment, you can listen to any book that you want to listen to. A recent study showed that 27% of adults haven't read a book in the last year. So if that's you and you're looking for a way to get started reading again and can't find the time, Audible can help you. For example, right now I'm loving listening to Randall Monroe's new book, How To. It's the absurd scientific advice for common real world problems. It's really funny and really awesome. He's one of my favorite authors. So it's really nice to listen to these books. It always saves your spot in the right place. It syncs with your Kindle if you have it. You can just sign up with your Amazon account so there's a really easy linkage going on. And so it's really easy to get going with Audible. So if you go to audible.com slash the Action Lab, or if you text Action Lab to 500-500, you can get a free 30-day trial. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.